Welcome to another build. Uh, so the previous build that I made was that skid steer. <clears throat> we'll, we'll name it whatever it is. The red and gray skid steer, just so we're not uh, having issues with manufacturers. But today we're going to be making the yellow and black uh, dozer. <clears throat> I'm not sure what manufacturer it is, but uh, let's just pretend it's one of those dozers from a yellow manufacturer. Uh, so to get started, typically we will print out all the parts. <clears throat> I've printed out the main chassis or the hub or the tub. Uh, I've put body filler in here, Bondo. I'm going to be sanding it down and then painting and then I'll start assembly. Uh, so that'll be uh, in the video here, how to assemble all this. But I want to start off with the body, uh, the cab, I should say, the front, uh, the blade and uh, the sprockets themselves. So first we're going to go to the sprockets. <clears throat> and the sprockets are a three piece. So there's the cap. Uh, there's the main sprocket itself and then there's the hub now this hub is a six millimeter shaft hub all again all the parts and fasteners I'll put them in the description of the video as well as on my Facebook uh, page uh, there'll be a list of all the, the items but uh, we'll start off here with what do you need to get started right so we're gonna order uh, two of these uh, usually they comes with a pack of two <clears throat> these are 440 screw holes but just drill them out and use your M3 screws. And what happens with these guys is they are pre-drilled um, or there's holes already made into it, right? Six holes uh, in the back of it and then you will screw into these holes. You may have to make it slightly bigger. Again, use your 2.8 uh, drill bits. Um, I have my own drill bits here that are metric but they're not actually metric because if you measure these they're off by a slight bit but it's close enough so like this 2.5 is really like 2.6 something but that's perfect for drilling out these holes so that the, the M3 screws can go in and grip uh, the plastic. So that's what it'll look like on the back. You'll place the hub uh, on there with three screws and then this will be ready to go. There is a set screw here uh, you can put it here or here, but this set screw will be used to attach to the motor. Now the motors, you can have, I use 100 uh, RPM motors, but they're this style. It has a six millimeter shaft. So when you do put this on the shaft, once it's in the body, you'll line this up, okay, with the D part of the shaft. So the shaft is in the shape of a D. You'll slide this on, but not all the way, okay? You're going to put it out a certain amount where it's going to line up with the rest of the track carrier, okay? That's that part. We'll get to that later when we're installing. But just to show you that this is the 6mm uh, uh, hubs that you'll need to order. Now, what else do you need to make this? Well, you're going to need a lot of fasteners. So get yourself a kit that has <clears throat> the M3 uh, screws and a variety of sizes, all the way from M uh, 3x4 all the way up to M 3x20 or 25. So get you a good set of those. These ones here are the uh, round head uh, cap screws, okay? Uh, instead of the flat head ones, get the round ones, they'll contour nicely. Another part that you're gonna have to order from AliExpress. It's the only place I can find it and you actually have to get the specific uh, like driver for it is these little screws. Now, there's, they're different in the fact that, I don't know if you can catch it, but they're a hex head, but it looks like a socket screw type. Um, so it's a little bit different than your regular round head where the Allen key goes on the middle here. Well, this one you need to have like a socket go over it to make it work, all right? So that's a hole. And this one, you need an actual Allen key or a driver with the pointy end to go into the hole. So this one goes in the hole, this one, the hole goes on it and it fastens. Now, where are we gonna use this? There's two spots. Number one, on the idlers right here, there's four of them. 
again, if you want to use these screws, you can. If you don't want to use this or go through the hassle, you can glue this on or you can use your regular uh, M2 screws, okay? Just the shorter ones uh, and put those in here instead, okay? So these are going to be about a six to eight millimeter uh, length. You don't want to go too far because it'll go right into the idler itself. Speaking of idlers, <clears throat> let's just clean this up a little bit. I'm making a mess. We are going to assemble the idler and we dropped something here, but it's just a spacer. Let's use the other guy. So the way this is going to be assembled is there's going to be this little spacer, the spring. This is a spring from an Ender 3. So if you have an Ender 3 and you buy extra springs, this is what you'll want to look for. It's just a regular spring. You're going to need a four millimeter shaft. Okay. These come in hundred millimeters, 200 millimeters, whatever length. It has to be four millimeter shaft. It's going to go into this hole here. And what this does is it's creates the offset that we need to put enough tension on the tracks. This has two of these outside pieces here that are going to go so that the track uh, bracket goes right, right in here. This is running on a, I believe, uh, three millimeter shaft, but it uses, um, uh, they are bearings. You need to get bearings for these guys. And I believe they're three by six or by eight uh, by three. Um, so again, I'll put the, the sizing in there, but these do use um, bearings, roller bearings uh, to roll smoothly. All right. And this, again, you may have to do some light sanding to make sure it's all uh, nice and smooth so it goes on the track properly. This length here, it's about, I'd say, what are we looking at here? Probably a 50, 60 mil. Let's say 55 millimeter long or 50 millimeter long uh, piece. So cut it in 50 millimeters. You probably have a 100 millimeter uh, piece. You'll cut it in half and then you'll place uh, this in here. Put some super glue, okay, to hold it in place. And then this will go in to the track assembly. Now the little bogey wheels, these are all designed for <clears throat> these M2 screws. All right, so the M2 screws will go through the track assembly, one on each side, and then you'll use these lock nuts, okay? They have a nylon thread, uh, nylon on the inside. Um, so yeah, I just order some of these M2 lock nuts and they'll go on the outside and you'll just tighten them down just enough so that they're snug but the wheels will still spin freely. So we'll assemble those soon. Another part that we're going to need to uh, look at is these ones here, these top uh, bogey wheels. <clears throat> now this is attached into the uh, carriers on the back so you'll see like there's this space here. This is going to go in this spot here, you'll screw this down and just enough so that it sits there and is in line with the whole track system, okay? Your idlers, again, will go and feed through these two track assemblies. There's a hole inside here. You wanna make sure that this goes through the hole, okay? And assemble like this and push it through. Just make sure that there is nothing binding it and then you push this on and it'll slide and should be close to the beginning here so as we do this it should end there uh, with tension right now I forgot to put the little spacer here but even with that you can see it creates enough resistance so that the track does compress if it needs to all right another thing you're going to need to order are these m2 set screws okay these are for the tracks you are assembling the track all right you're going to screw it all the way through one side will have the set screw opening and you'll screw this all the way through until the end is just poking out.
So you can feel the tip of the set screw. And that's as far as you're gonna need to do it. And what this does is it gives it a nice smooth, clean look. All right, and you can paint your tracks if you want to. You can leave it clean the way I have it. Uh, when you are printing your tracks, you will wanna print them like this. You do not wanna put any supports in the holes because that's gonna create a lot of work. So the way I assemble these tracks is what I'll do is I'll get a M3, uh, or sorry, a three millimeter uh, drill bit and drill out these front two narrow, okay, the narrow part, just drill through with the three millimeter so it's smooth. Leave the back one so that the, the, um, the set screw can grip and hold so it doesn't uh, loosen, okay? So that's the way I would do it. Again, supports under the outside, in the middle, and the other side, but no supports on the holes themselves. All right, and again, drill through this uh, with a three millimeter. Do not drill through the back ones so that the set screw holds. All right, tracks covered. Let's move on to other parts that we do need. Now, we are gonna need this piece here, and this is for the blade. Okay, this is the articulation point of where the blade will pivot. All right, and this is for your gas struts on your vehicle. Um, I'll put a link for this as well. It's, I think, a 10 millimeter. But anyways, everything pivots off of this. All right, so as you can see here, mine is already in. And again, that goes in like that. And then these little caps here will hold the blade so it can do its six-way articulation. Now, other things you're gonna need are M2 screws for those uh, bogey wheels. They are approximately 25 millimeters. So M2 by 25s, you're gonna need 12 of these because there's 12 idler uh, wheels. Moving on to the body. Now, what do we need to do? Well, this is printed in two pieces. So you're going to super glue everything. Again, this looks very smooth because I use body filler or Bondo. All right, and um, when you do assemble it, all these parts are printed on their own. Um, these are two halves. Now this mesh here, this mesh is from the dollar store or your local cheapo store. And what it is is a splatter screen. And so you cut this stuff out, stainless steel. You cut uh, the pieces that you need and then super glue them. So that's one way of getting it um, attached. So it looks like this. Again, you glue everything and then attach it. All these handle grabs are an M, or sorry, uh, I think a two to three millimeter uh, brass rod that I just bent into place and then I super glued it uh, in place. All these pieces are super glued uh, and painted. Uh, so that's what we've got here. Again, I use just a marker to create some look here the decals were done on a Cricut uh, tool or machine uh, also inside if you're going to be using a sound kit I did make a bracket here that you can slide in and it should be held in place with super glue but it's designed for this speaker that I have um, so yeah if you don't have a speaker then that's extra space to put weights moving on to the cab uh, the cab is all glued except for the doors. Okay, so these doors are on hinges. They're little brass hinges that I bought from AliExpress. Uh, glued them in place and then I heated the little nails and uh, with the heat pushed them through into the plastic which created a bond. Uh, these doors do hinge and open all the way to reveal a little magnet. Okay, so this little magnet meets up with that little magnet to make sure that the door stays closed. Uh, the plexiglass that's in here, this I bought from Amazon. I think it's like a two millimeter. Uh, again, I measured it out and then cut it uh, with a Dremel tool to fit the rough area. And then I glued it in place uh, with Mod Podge just so that it didn't have that haziness. Um, to get the driver in and out, we have the roof. And this is on those little brass uh, hinges that I purchased from AliExpress and it opens and closes, allows you to get access to my driver who just fell out for the operator. Now the internal, uh, again, all these parts are 3D printed and glued. Okay, so I glue them in place. 
uh, and put them in here so they stay. So everything is glued. The roof and the air conditioning unit is glued as one piece. The outside wall, this black piece is one piece. This trim around the window is another piece. The doors are their own. This is the front. So the front uh, piece here is then screwed into the, the bottom. So if we can look under here, these M2 screws that go into this front plate, this window is glued. There's a screw that goes back here to hold the roof down. These little teeth are the, these parts here are glued on. The floor is glued, everything is glued to each other. Um, again, I've made my own pieces of plastic uh, glass. This is all uh, glued in place. Now to attach it to the base, there's holes all along the sides here. And we're using again, the M2 uh, sockets to go in with some uh, washers and then they screw inside. So that's kind of a rough look at how to put this together. Again, I would, the way I assembled it was I glued this piece to this piece first, and then I glued the cross brace here and this cross brace, uh, and then I glued the roof on with the back air conditioning unit already in place. Then I glued the front here, and then I attached the this light last. Now, if you're gonna do lights, uh, it is, open to put lights inside and then you just have to run them through here inside drill some holes and then run your wiring down if you want to have lights on the top so that's the cab that's the front uh, engine mount these are pretty simple to assemble i mean once you look at how it is it's all glued again the mesh is glued on these caps i just painted them so they're already you know part of this piece here um, the rear, a hey, your grill, this actually, uh, when you put it on, hooks onto the back here. Okay. So this goes in between. And then there's also this part that hooks onto the bottom. So when we put it on, it looks like that. Okay, and it's hooked on here and it also hooks on the bottom so that doesn't just fall off uh, what else am I missing here just assembly of stuff we'll get into the electronics and the front blade actually all right moving on to the blade uh, the blade has these generic Chinese uh, linear servos they are oh, in the push there. Uh, there are 12 volts, 15 millimeters per second, 30 millimeter throw, uh, 64N is the torque. Uh, these work really well. They're pretty simple. Uh, they are designed to be attached to an ESC. So they're not the servo style, which has a three wire with the white. Uh, this one, you move the stick, you let go, it stops in that position. Um, which is great because then it holds the blade where I want it without having to move the stick. Um, so there's two of these. They're relatively cheap. So pick those up from AliExpress. Next, uh, these are four millimeter shafts that are on here. Okay, so I just cut these down to this width, whatever this width is, and then I glued them in place. Uh, I probably could have used a four millimeter screw and just uh, put it in place, but I thought, why not something different? This is again, is just my test uh, piece. Um, the other thing is these are all using four millimeter, uh, four, M4 uh, screws. And they are, uh, these ones here, we use washers approximately, I'd say a 20 millimeter. Yeah, these are 20 millimeter long. Uh, so they go through and into the main body. All right, and then we'll talk about this here, which is that um, motor. Sorry, I keep hitting you guys. So it's this, uh, it's a shaft uh, and it's 600 RPM. But anyways, it goes inside here. So when you print this out, you'll have this go inside 
and then you're gonna have to cut this down. Uh, this one I believe is 60 millimeters long, the shaft, uh, and then I cut it off, and then you'll have this cylinder piece here. Now there's a very critical part here. Um, when you are doing this, you're gonna have to buy some of these guys. Uh, I know it's kind of a bit of a pain in the butt, but these are knurled uh, shafts. And what happens is you'll take one of these guys and you're gonna heat it up uh, with a heat gun or with a solder soldering iron. And what happens is this is what's gonna go on here, okay? And as the motor spins the shaft, it's gonna bring in this piece in or out so you can do the tilting. Now, um, you have to heat it up to get into this plastic here and then you wanna remove it, make sure it's straight, not, not crooked or else it'll bind. So make sure it's done. I had to do this like four times, print this piece four times before I got it nice and perfect so it didn't bind. Um, so you'll need to buy these now I don't know they sell them as a big kit with a ton of them you're only gonna need one but they're not that expensive so you can do that <clears throat> um, these guys will not fit down here there's just not enough space so the way it's been designed that's just how it works uh, you're gonna need a four millimeter shaft for here and this one here is approximately I think 80 or 82, 82, 83 millimeters. Uh, and that's gonna go through this part here, okay? Into the body and then on the, the other side. So 82 millimeters will get you in there and it should be snug so it doesn't wanna come out. Again, another four, uh, M4 uh, by 20 uh, or shorter actually on this one here. Uh, now, when we get into the blade itself, there's a few parts here that you're going to need to also order. Uh, these are from Dubro. Um, they have a, a round head similar to this guy, but much smaller <clears throat> from he uh, for here. So one will go on one side, one will go on the other side. You're going to have to cut these down a little bit, get a like a 440 uh, threaded rod to put in here. These are all M3 screws. Uh, this one's an M2 and a half, I think, or whatever came with this servo. Now this servo in particular, you're probably gonna wonder what is that? <clears throat> this is probably gonna be one of the more expensive parts you buy for this thing. It's like a hundred bucks for this. Uh, but essentially it's a linear servo like these ones. Okay, so just like this, but instead of the motor being at the back, it's underneath and this shaft will come in and out 20 millimeters. Uh, that's the throw. It runs as a servo style. So it stays, you know, 50% sticking out. And then when you move the servo, it moves. And if you move the servo back to center, it goes back to the center like a regular servo would work. But anyways, this goes right here. Now, one thing you'll probably want to do is shave this corner down a little bit, okay? So it's like on a 45 degree, just enough, all right, that you don't get into the motor or anything inside. The reason for that is to give you more articulation on the, uh, the six-way piece, so you can see how I trimmed it down a bit, okay? And what that does is it allows the blade to pivot more, um, you know, from side to side. So that guy goes in there. This piece has a screw that goes through the top here to pivot. Uh, so keep in mind that these are more intricate. That's a M2 screw that goes through there. On the bottom, you'll have two of these guys. Okay, and what they do is they hold that ball uh, joint there and four M2 screws that are about, let's say 12 mils long. Uh, and that goes in like that. And for the front here, I included a blade, a, a 3D printed blade that you can glue on. Uh, it's a sacrificial piece that can be removed if it wears down. So you have a wear blade. I use a piece of metal. That's the reason why I did this is because I wanted to have a real metal cut edge uh, on there. And yeah, that's these parts. Again, when they get assembled, they'll get assembled before you put the track carriers on, okay? 
um, because if you put this, if you try to put it on after, you can't because there's no access to put this pin through, right? And so the way that goes is through here, and then your track carriers get put on after. So we'll show you all that and get some assembly on the bottom going on.